All right, guys. All right, here's homework for tonight, Tuesday, April 30th. The objectives, you're going to read the story the first time through and answer the comprehension comprehension question at the end on a separate piece of paper if you want 100 percent all right so this is the story the pod and this is in your close reader uh pages 19 through 24. couldn't pete talk about anything but fish jesse waring tried to block his cousin's voice but there was no escape Dolphins aren't fish, they're mammals, Pete was lecturing. They look big and tough, but they can get stressed or scared, like the stranded do dolphin we rescued. Jesse? His mother was standing beside him, her eyes full of concern. His parents were always worrying about him these days, Jesse thought irritably, and the other relatives were just as bad. Poor Jesse. It's a shame about the accident. He used to be a great athlete. Even when they didn't talk to him, he could feel their pitying thoughts. Can you go to the store for me? His mother was saying. We've run out of milk. Uh, that is, she added quickly, if you're not too tired. And I want to make sure to visit the Cape Cod Stranding Network, Pete was droning on. They have a hotline and they do great work. Yada, yada, yada. Sure, Mom, Jesse said. Anything to get away from Pete's lectures and all those pitying eyes. He snatched up the car keys from the table in the entryway, grabbing his windbreaker as he limped out the door. Once outside, he wished he brought his parka. The wind had an icy sting, but he wasn't going back into the house. He'd always enjoyed the annual Waring family reunion when cousins, uncles, and aunts from all over the country got together and rented a house on New England's Cape Cod. But this march was different. It was the first time the clan had gathered since the accident. Jesse didn't want to think about how a man driving a pickup had jumped a red light, slamming into his car and fracturing his legs. Until then, Jesse had been the star of the school soccer team, certain of an athletic scholarship. Not anymore, he muttered, then frowned as he realized he'd passed the store. Well, okay, there was a convenience store about 30 miles away, and the drive would give him some needed alone time. At first, the silence was great. Get this out of the way. But as Jesse drove on the road that wound beside the ocean, he kept thinking how his future had been smashed along with his legs. Pep talks that people gave him made it worse. He was a cripple, and he knew it. These days, Jesse always felt as if there was a tight, hard knot in his chest. On impulse, he turned the wheel, pulling into an empty parking lot that faced the water. He got out and limped down some stairs. Except for screeching seagulls and a few scattered rocks, the beach was deserted. Suddenly, Jesse tensed. That rock, did it move? He took a step closer and saw that it was no rock. The dolphin wasn't very big, not even four feet long. When Jesse hobbled over, the big fish, a mammal, according to Pete, rolled an eye at him. How long had it been there? It was breathing, but its sides were heaving painfully. Fragments of Pete's endless monologue came back to him. His cousin had said that a dolphin's rib structure wasn't built to protect it on land. The body weight of the, this dolphin was slowly compressing its vital organs, and if it didn't get back into the water soon, it could die. It was going to low tide, and the waves seemed far away. The best thing to do was to call Pete, who would know what to do. Jesse reached for his cell phone. It wasn't there. He'd left it in the pocket of his parka. He could drive home and get Pete, but that would mean leaving the dolphin. Would it be alive when he got back? He knew nothing about this creature except that it was helpless. The dolphin's eye rolled again, and Jesse felt a sudden jolt of empathy. It looked as scared as he had felt when they'd wheeled him into the emergency room that afternoon. Hey, bud, Jesse knelt down beside the dolphin. Okay, I can't just leave you to die, but how do I get you back into the water? All right, so your homework question, we'll stop there. We'll read the rest of the story tomorrow night for homework. Your homework question for tonight is, how does Jesse feel about his family at the beginning of this story, and how do you know? Use the best quote that supports your answer. So this should be an ape question. Use ape. Jesse feels this way about his family. And give me a quote to support. Again, that's your homework. Make sure that you use APE. 